In previous videos, we talked about the philosophy which evolved in ancient Israel and how they began to see history as an unfolding narrative. And if we are able to see and recognize the crucial turning points of this narrative, then we can properly order ourselves to bring about paradise. We talked about the philosophy of Socrates and Plato and how they saw self-transcendence and overcoming our own self-destructive behavior as the ultimate goal of humanity. We saw Aristotle's theory of potential and how he believed everything around us was acting on purpose, trying to reach its fullest actuality and trying to come to completion. And because humans are doing the same, we fit in and belong to the world around us. And finally, we looked at how this idea of fitting in with reality began to be undermined around the 14th century. As people are experiencing death, war, famine, plague, and the collapse of their worldview, they are also deciding it is better to impose your will upon this world, rather than embed yourself within it. And these changes are coming hand in hand with the rise of commercialism. As the feudal system is on the decline, and people are beginning to sell their labor and travel long distances to go where their commodity is scarce, they are shipping their commodities across great distances. But the problem with ships is that they can sink. If a ship sinks, it can wipe out your entire livelihood. The solution to this was to create a corporation, a body of people who will share risk and divide profit. Corporations need things like banks and insurance. Contracts enforced by the state become very important. Around the 14th century, Arabic numbers begin to replace the cumbersome Roman numerals. With Arabic numerals, there is suddenly a huge increase in our computational powers. To manage all this new, abstract finance, the importance of math comes to the forefront. People realize that if you can get a ship to its destination faster, without it sinking, there is a lot more money to be made. To improve navigation, we begin using this new math to keep better track of the heavens. And with our improved observation of the stars, people begin to notice things. Things that don't make sense. Things like Mars going into retrograde. Why is Mars doing something that seems so chaotic? Copernicus comes along and tells us how to solve problems like this. Pay close attention to the wording he uses. Copernicus says the math is better if you put the sun at the center. What he is saying is don't pay attention to your experience, pay attention to the math. This is a momentous change. We all see the sun orbit around the earth every single day of our lives. Our experience is telling us that we are at the center of the universe, but it is an illusion. We are all mistaken. If I can be wrong about something that I can clearly observe every day of my life, how can I ever trust my senses again? In this old Aristotelian model, we all fit in and belong with the universe. But we have just been given proof that the structure of our experience has nothing to do with the structure of reality. Galileo expands on this Copernican idea, and he tells us that mathematics is the language of the universe, and that is how the mind can reconnect itself to the world. Galileo integrates this new math into what we now know as the scientific method, and he begins to use experiments. Using this new experimental method, Galileo discovers inertial motion. In this old worldview, things were acting on purpose because of this internal drive to better themselves. Everything was acting intentionally and everything was in its proper place. Galileo discovers that things don't act on purpose to make things more actual and more beautiful. Things act because they smash into each other mindlessly. But each of us still feels that we are autonomous beings. We have our will and we act on purpose, but nothing else does. Instead of acting in collaboration with the universe, we are now an isolated will that doesn't belong. And what is our will compared to all this dead matter? The narrative unfolding of a universe trying to come to completion is now dead because nothing acts on purpose and there is no story to things. A universe trying to overcome its inner conflict is gone and the sense of a mutual fitting and belonging to the world around us has been shattered. What is left? Math and an isolated will trying to impose order on whatever it can. And even that isn't real, because your experience is faulty and cannot be trusted. Math is the language of the universe. What about love and beauty? What about everything that belongs to our subjective experience? Galileo has an answer to this. He divides the world into primary and secondary properties. What is primary is things we can do math on, like shape and weight. What's secondary are non-mathematical properties, like love, beauty, and meaning. All the stuff we care about is an afterthought. The world does not possess these things. 
That is what the mind willfully imposes on reality. When you feel connected to things for their beauty, love, or meaning, that is all a mistake. The meaning that was captured in these old worldviews are being withdrawn, and we are now trapped in a mind that cannot connect to the world. This is part 9 in a series of videos on the meaning crisis, based on a lecture series by Dr. John Verveke. You can check out the full series here, and make sure to join us next week when we move on to Martin Luther and the Protestant Reformation.